Did you miss the USASF national meeting this week? I really hope you didn't. But if you did, we are going to cover some of the highlights from that meeting. Don't miss this episode. Welcome to the Hit Zero Podcast, where our goal is to build better cheer athletes. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Hit Zero Podcast. I am, I've been riding this ridiculous high since I got back from Las Vegas yesterday. For those that don't know, <clears throat> I was in Las Vegas at the USASF national meeting. It is the second annual national meeting for the USASF. um, And it was hands down one of the most exciting and fulfilling experiences that I've had in my cheer life. And today on this episode, we're going to break down some of the things that were covered at the USASF national meeting for those that were not able to attend. And before we even get started, I have to tell you guys, Make it a point. If you're a coach, make it a point to get to the USASF national meeting next year. It truly was a life-changing experience for so many reasons. Um, And we're going to go over some of those today to give you an idea of some of the things that you may have missed. Um, One of the more common threads that you saw throughout the week or the the weekend uh, was athlete safety. This topic really permeated everything that was that was brought up that was discussed and and class wise um, kind of the the foundation of a lot of of the topics that were covered at the meeting now we talk about athlete safety that that is more than just keeping them safe from injury the biggest thing that was covered and that was kind of harped on was protecting the athletes um, you know through social media and, you know, also in, in trying to prevent exploitation. Um, there was a, a lot of discussion about social media safety, as well as the image that all star is portraying to, uh, to the public and how we can better serve our athletes and our sport by putting out a, a more refined and more, uh, unified, presentation of what we do to the public. Uh, the, my weekend started or my, my week with the, with USASF started with a leadership training called impact. Uh, for anyone that has heard of impact, maybe you haven't impact is an amazing leadership, uh, kind of like a leadership boot camp, so to say that really dives into all of the things necessary to improve your leadership skills. We did a lot of group collaboration, a lot of group discussion. We had scenarios that we had to work through and even got down to like the nuts and bolts of public speaking, uh, which was phenomenal. Watching, you know, some of the coaches kind of come out of their shell, get more comfortable speaking in front of groups and addressing groups and, and working through problems was, was truly uh, a really cool thing to see because you, you we know that going back to their teams and their community, that they're going to be able to make deeper and more meaningful connections. They're going to be able to bring the best out of people and be able to better impact their athletes and their program. You know, and one of the things that was mentioned, you know, in that leadership training was as a coach or as a program owner, you know, your, your goal is to bring out the leader in all of your athletes. And there was a quote that was said that I really liked um, that really kind of opened my eyes. And it's the quote was every kid is a leader. And if you haven't seen it, it's because you haven't brought it out of them yet. And that truly, that truly, you know, struck a chord with me because, you know, in working with cheer for the last 16 years and working at different levels, and then also working, you know, different age athletes, you know, it's true. Every, every one of your kids has a leadership potential inside of them. We just have to find a way to bring it out of them. And that really goes into being an effective coach and leader yourself and learning what really drives your athletes and what, um, you know, how they think, you know, we, we've talked about before, you know, especially with like mental blocks and things, you know, that topic that we've covered quite a bit that every athlete has a different learning style. Every athlete, you know, they kind of take a different way. So, it really does come down to the coach and the program owner to learn about your athletes and really connect with them on a level where you can bring out 
um, these leadership qualities that they have inside. And impact this this impact training did a phenomenal job of helping to get the ball rolling with bringing out the leader in your athletes. Now on the athlete side, we did have athletes at this national meeting. It wasn't just for coaches and program owners. We actually had a really large group of athletes. It was it was incredible to watch. Uh, to watch them go through the, you know, this transformation that they went through. Um, and two of the programs that the USASF offers for our athletes, one is Bolt and one is March, both leadership training uh, boot camps essentially for them as well. Uh, and the March one is actually specific for our young men. So absolutely, if you're thinking about, you know, how can I quickly enhance the, uh, morale and the connect, you know, the connectivity connection within your gym, definitely look into impact bolt and March three phenomenal programs that are off that, that basically can be offered through the USASF. I know that I talked to some gym owners from different States that had actually had some of this training done with their athletes and they, they just raved about it. They raved about the energy that it brought out in the kids, the, the unity that comes from it in the program uh, there was nothing but great things to say. And even listening to the feedback from the athletes that were there, they were raving about the leadership training that they got and felt that it was extremely beneficial, not only for, for themselves as athletes, but also looking into the future, looking into their careers and things like that. And that's actually one of the, 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 the topics that was discussed a bit was life after all-star, you know, how are we setting our kids up for success post all-star whether it's continuing in all-star at a different level or a different role or transitioning into a professional career outside of all-star. Um, so a lot of great information was given there. Our keynote speaker for the event was Anton Gunn. And Anton Gunn has a book called Raising Cain. This guy was an incredible keynote speaker. He's worked with President Obama. He's He's a, an, uh, a best-selling author, uh, was a former collegiate football player, and the guy came into the room and just lit it on fire. There was so much energy when he entered the room, and he commanded attention in the most amazing way and gave one of the most inspirational speeches I've ever seen in my life. Anton truly was you know, a cherry on top of an amazing weekend. And the funny thing is his talk was actually towards the beginning. So it was like having dessert before a meal. Um, but I can't recommend him enough. Check him out. Anton Gunn. He's on Instagram at Anton Gunn, A-N-T-O-N-G-U-N-N. And his book, Raising Cain, there is an ebook version on his website that I highly recommend that you pick up and, 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 and really dive into his material. Uh, he, Actually, in hearing the story of how he was actually uh, kind of turned on to the USASF, was uh, some of the the some of the directors in the USASF went to some leadership training and they heard him speak, and they all kind of looked at each other like kind of that unspoken, you know, we need to get this guy kind of look. And we were fortunate enough to have him come and speak at the USASF national meeting, and he truly set the tone for what turned out to be an incredible few days. Now, some highlights that we talked about throughout the weekend, again, it's going to be, you know, there's no way I could give you guys all of the, um, all of the, the information that was presented because we were there for three days. So a um, couple of highlights that I want to touch on and, and just give you kind of like a, a feel an overview of how the, 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 the national meeting went. Now we broke this down. There were, there were sessions each day and you had multiple sessions that you could choose from based on what your desires were. As a coach or as a program owner, the athletes had an entire schedule written out for them that they went through. Um, and, and really, everyone had a, just, it's almost like a buffet of amazing courses. It, it almost was challenging to pick what you wanted to go to because there were so many great courses. But um, some highlights from different, you know, courses or different classes that I, I sat in on and different, different classes that I participated in as far as kind of teaching and, and, and leading some communication. One positive thing that I really like to see, uh, Jim Chadwick, the president of USASF, gave an amazing kind of state of the sport, state of the union address and told us, you know, the, the statistics on all star versus other youth sports. And all star is up actually in enrollment nationwide, which most other sports are actually down. 
a few percentage points. So All Star is in a great place. We're growing, you know, steadily, and things are looking really, really good for our sport. In fact, we have over 150,000 All Star athletes in the United States, which is insane. It's ridiculous. Um, also, we have 15,000 plus coaches and program owners, so we have a huge presence in the athletic space. And you know, there's just so much on the horizon for our sport that you really, you know, buckle up because things are going to be, are, are going really well. Um, so there was, you know, some, some obvious things that were talked about were, um, uh, the changes in divisions, you know, as you guys know, we have a, uh, we have a new division, division seven, and basically there was some shifting of five restricted five and six. Now it's, you know, five restricted is now five, five, the former five is now six and six is now seven. Um, and, I sat in on a, you know, a brief overview of rules changes uh, for different divisions um, and also got to see, you know, what new stunts are allowed, what new stunts aren't, you know, what, what things were changed. Honestly, guys, a lot of things were, were simplified when it came down to the rule changes, especially with stunts. You know, I know there was a lot of issues with choreography. You know, you guys know just as well as I do on those Facebook pages where people are always posting, you know, is this legal? How can I make this legal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are actually a lot of changes that were made to make legalities much more simple and actually give athletes and coaches and choreographers a lot more freedom with uh, with some of the, the stunt sequences and things they were doing. So that was uh, that was a pretty cool class to sit in on. One thing that I did want to touch base on is connection leaders. So for those of you that aren't familiar, there are a group of people that basically are volunteers that dedicate time and energy to supporting the coaches in All Star. And there, those people in each region are called your connection leaders. And so, what what connection leaders serve as is kind of a liaison between the coaches and the USASF, providing support, answering questions, and just you know being that that extra set of ears, eyes, and hands to help our coaches navigate through some of the things in All Star. Um, I, I am a connection leader uh, for the USASF, and I got to meet the other connection leaders. And it's just, they're, they're just an amazing group of people that I got to learn a lot from personally that come from different states, different regions. They have different roles in the sport, different histories in the sport. So I can tell you now, your connection leaders are it's a dynamic group that have a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of information. And again, our, our whole role is to support you guys and to help you guys have the best experience in your gym um, and with your program. So I definitely recommend if you haven't already get on the app store and download the USASF connection app. It is basically USASF's own social media app. It's really cool. And you can connect with your connection leaders. You can also connect with the uh, directors of the USASF in both cheer and dance. And that kind of segues into another thing that was really awesome at the meeting. And that is the amount of dance, uh, dance coaches and the, the support of our all-star dance. Um, that was, that was, that was there is, you know, we, everything that was talked about was, was done in a way towards our all-star cheer and our all-star dance. And if you're, if you don't have a dance program, I know it's, you know, a lot of people don't have all-star dance in their program, or they may not be really familiar with all-star dance. You know, all-star dance is, is, is a phenomenal part of the USASF. And, and if you haven't gotten a chance to, uh, to reach out or to connect with an all-star dance team, I highly recommend if you're a cheer gym and you have an all-star dance gym in your area, you know, make the effort to reach out, connect with that team because there is, you know, there's, there was a lot of energy and a lot of amazing things that were presented to the group uh, from our, our dance counterparts in the USASF. And, you know, these people are doing some incredible things. And if you haven't watched competition wise, like the, the USASF cheer, uh, cheer, or I'm sorry, USASF dance worlds, get on YouTube, look up some of the highlights from dance worlds. It is amazing. These, these, these dance athletes are just as fun to watch as our cheer athletes. So big time, check them out. They're amazing. We're going to take a break for just a second before we touch on the last couple of things from the USASF national meeting. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Hey guys, and thank you so much for your support for the Hit Zero podcast. I really couldn't have done it without Anchor. Anchor is the easiest way to make your own podcast. They give you everything you need in one place and it's free. 
and you can use it from your phone or your computer. Their creation tools allow you to record and edit your podcast so it sounds great. And they even distribute it for you so it can be heard everywhere like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. Also, you can even make money from your podcast and you don't have to have a minimum amount of listeners either. So if you're ready to start your own podcast, download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm. Look forward to hearing your first episode. All right, guys, we're back with the second half of our highlights and overviews from the 2019 USASF national meeting that was this past week. So the first thing I want to jump into on the second half of our episode um, is we got to hear from some amazing speakers that are, you know, kind of revolutionaries and, and movers and shakers in the sport. One of my favorite speakers was Bill Seeley. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Bill, he's the president of USA Cheer, and he gave a lot of really, really good information about what USA Cheer's role is in the cheer world and the all-star world, how they are connected with the USASF, with some of the high school uh, organizations, with Stump the Sport. And he also gave a lot of really cool information about our standing with the IOC, the Olympic Committee. Um, they are projecting that really, really soon, like within the next few weeks to months, that the preliminary status that we got for cheer would be uh, transition into full status. So there's some amazing things coming down the line because as we know, post Olympics, the attendance and growth rate for sports in the Olympics tends to spike very, very quickly. Um, you, had, you know, rugby was another, was a big uh, example of that. We had rugby that was brought back to the Olympics, uh, in 2016, USA rugby had been on a steady incline after the Olympics. USA rugby took a dramatic spike in, in, in interest and, and enrollment and program and program build. So there is definitely a correlation with growth in a sport once it is present in the Olympics or has gained Olympic status. So a lot of really cool things with USA Cheer. Definitely check out their website, USA, uh, usacheer.org, I believe. Let me double check that while I'm sitting here. Um, and don't leave me yet. You know, it's always got to have USA cheer org or, or, or dot com. Yep. USA cheer.org. Get on their website. Um, there's a lot of cool things there. And I know everybody for the most part, people think about USA cheer. They think about just the competitive side at worlds, um, with the ICU, but their website is chock full of tons of information about things like combines that you can go to with the USA cheer team. Um, also talks about stunt the sport. It gives you a lot of information on if you are curious about trying out for Team USA. Um, also talks about there's some some safety and education things. Cheer Safe, the National Safety Council, um, ACA, and the rules. So there's just a lot of information there that if you're interested in learning more about Team USA, um, their website is chock full of information that can help benefit your program. Now, getting back to some of the things that we talked about with athlete safety, you know the biggest biggest thing that was brought up and was discussed in, in quite a bit of detail was the, you know, unfortunately exploitation of our athletes. You know, it's no secret that there is, you know, a bit of an image issue in that, you know, there's a fear, honestly, of our athletes being exploited. Uh, you know, unfortunately that that's starting to come to light a lot more, especially with the USA gymnastics, uh, incident that happened, um, a little while back. And so there's a lot of scrutiny on, um, you know, cheer, gymnastics, dance, you know, all youth sports, really, there's a lot of scrutiny, um, that's bringing out a lot of unfortunately un unfavorable things. And so the USASF has taken, uh, quite a bit of, of responsibility in creating a more safe environment for athletes, you know, in partnering with different organizations for athlete safety, for, you know, reducing, sexual exploitation and trying to eliminate that from our sport. You know, we, we got to hear a lot from people that are involved with the safety council of the USASF, you know, the background checks that all of our coaches have to do. Um, we brought in experts and, pan, you know, created panels of experts in, uh, you know, exploitation, human trafficking, um, online bullying and things like that. So there, there was a lot of amazing information and to sum it all, excuse me, to sum it all up, you know, the biggest thing I can say is that 
the safety of our kids is is of the utmost importance, our number one priority. And this weekend was was a big reminder of that. And the steps that are being taken to ensure that we're doing everything we possibly can to minimize exploitation of our athletes, get rid of bullying. I mean, we truly are in an amazing position to make these changes and with these initiatives that have been set in place. And it, I highly recommend that you you learn more about these initiatives and these programs because, uh, you know, our athlete safety is number one. And it was very apparent this weekend that there is a unified front in making that, uh, making that well-known and also making it happen. So athlete safety is a huge concern. That was a, you know, paramount part of the meeting. Some other things that we talked about that I want to share with you guys. So there was a new program that was rolled out last year, uh, fundamentals program. If you are a USASF member, the fundamentals program was included in your members box. That was actually kind of the entire program was given to you. And there were 700 gyms that took part the first year that we had the fundamentals program and it generated so many new athletes. And if you're a business owner, um, help to generate a lot of new athletes in your program. So one thing I would say that if you haven't looked into it, look into the fundamentals program in cheer and dance. There's a fundamentals dance as well. Um, and, and give it a go. It, it truly is. It's an easy to implement, um, program. They give you all the steps you need from a to Z. And if you're not familiar coming up very, very soon is the national cheer, national all-star cheer and dance day. It is a, um, it's a basically a, a template for how to have your own cheer and dance holiday that the USASF created. Um, that comes with a dance that you can teach. Comes with again all of the materials that you need to spark some interest in your communities um, for All Star Cheer and Dance because you know obviously we want to continue to grow the sport. And being a USASF member, you guys have access to all of these things in your membership box. If you're not a member of USASF, I cannot stress enough how much the USASF is there here to support you. And I don't get paid to say that. That's just being honest with you. And if you're an athlete and you don't even know if your gym is part of the USASF, ask your coach and ask your uh, program owner, ask your gym owner if are you, you know, if you guys are members of the USASF and if not share with them this podcast, because they should hear about all the amazing things that they're doing for you guys. So fundamentals program, national cheer and dance day, uh, national all-star cheer and dance day coming up. Uh, the, the, the athletes that we had on site, they actually learned the dance that is taught for, uh, you know, that, that, that is taught when you, if you do decide to do the national all-star cheer and dance day, you know, with that, that kit, so to say is a, a DVD or, you know, or videos with eight counts, uh, shows the dance and it shows, um, a, you know, kind of, a a professionally done music video of the dance. Very, very cool. Um, and again, it's so easy to implement and is an, an amazing way to drive new athletes into your program. Um, with a holiday that the USASF has created for us. So again, guys, there's, there was so much that was covered from, you know, creating an emergency acts, you know, emergency, um, uh, emergency plan for the gym when, you know, th things go wrong. So there were, you know, Dr. Stevens spoke about, you know, creating an emergency, uh, emergency plan for when kids, you know, overheat and concussion protocols and, uh, performance physicals before the start of the year, first aid kits talked about, you know, the specifics of inhaler usage. And, you know, we also talked about a uh, big thing that, that I got to speak on was return to play and injury prevention, you know, uh, along with Debbie Love did her course with the rubber bands and, you know, working on strengthening and, and creating more balanced athletes. So just, there was just a wealth of, of knowledge um, at the event this, this past week. And, you know, if I know I've said it probably 10 times and I'll say it again, make it a point to come to the meeting next year. And in the meantime, make it a point to try to get some of this information that was presented because to be honest, every single gym that is in all-star should 
have been there this week. I mean, just simply put, there was way too much information that just just amazing information and resources at your you know at your disposal. Uh, so I cannot stress the um, the benefit of of being present at that meeting. So I hope that this gave you guys some idea of the amazing things that took place um, over the last few days. Again, it was it, it's hard to even wrap it up in a 20 minute spot. But um, if you have any questions specifically about some of the things that went on at the national meeting, you know, you can always reach out to me. I mean, again, as, as I said, I'm a connection leader, so I'm here to support you guys. And you guys know that already. I'm always here for y'all. Um, so feel free to reach out the cheer doc at gmail.com. Um, reach out with your questions. And if you have been on the fence about going to some of these meetings, or if you're on the fence about becoming a USASF member, I cannot stress enough how much value it will add to your program. And honestly, how, you know, how, how valuable it is for your athletes. So we're going to end there. If you have questions, shoot me a message. If not, I look forward to catching you on the next episode. Take care.